Good afternoon, good morning, or good evening, uh, everybody, to wherever you are. Um, I would like to welcome you to this uh, first uh, session of our international webinars, which we run this year, so-called Experts Roundtable. It should be an interactive session, so hopefully you will not hesitate to place your questions. My name is Christoph Zips. I'm the head of the courses and education department at Brilliant Group Germany. And uh, also I'm responsible for our international key, key opinion leaders. So excellent people using our materials and system, systems all over the globe. Um, thanks a lot for joining us this uh, today. Um, we expect more than 180 people to be online, which is a really good number. Um, as during due to the COVID, yeah, many companies offer um, online trainings and webinars, which clearly makes sense. And even after the pandemic, this will be uh, uh, a part of our life to educate or informate uh, or get information. Um, I'm very proud and honored to welcome Mr. Mohit Suryavanshi from Kolhapur, India, today with, with our opening session. Um, Moit, I know him since quite a few years now. He uh, uh, has reached the expert level in the breed and training. So he has been to Germany quite a few times. He's uh, fully trained through the breed and materials and system. He has a very deep knowledge in uh, the materials. Um, as you might know, breed and group is uh, um, yeah, one of the leading material providers in the end, especially in the fields of polymers, but not only. So um, hopefully you'll be inspired this afternoon uh, by some case or by a case presentation or several cases Mohit will show. Um, just a few words to Mohit in his lab. He's running a, in India, they say it's a small boutique lab, which has 24 people working there. In Germany, this is a huge lab already. A boutique lab has two technicians. So India, the sizes, uh, the, or the, um, yeah, the, the, the ratio is a bit different. So everything's big, a lot of people, and yeah, wonderful lab he runs. Um, working a lot with on the individual big implant cases, as we will see also in the presentation. Uh, his clients you find all over the country and um, yeah, very advanced in the digital technologies and yeah, uh, communication between clinic and lab, which is fundamental to have a good team play uh, if you want to reach predictable and excellent results. So Mohit, I think we can start right through with your presentation. Thanks again for being here. Um, looking forward to the beautiful pictures you will show us. Thank you so much, Christoph. It's an honor and pleasure to be on board and always a pleasure to talk about breed and products because we use them practically almost every day. So I start my presentation on this note. Uh, I need you to uh, able me to share my screen, please. One thing I would like to add just shortly, um, as this is an interactive session, we will interrupt the presentation for two times, Mohit will tell us, and you, uh, the audience, uh, I would like to ask to place the questions you have in the F&A section. You have a button where you can place questions F&A, and we will answer them individually after a short time, okay? So, hello everybody. Greetings from India. And to begin my presentation, I would like to dedicate this presentation to a icon that we lost yesterday. She was a cause she was called as the Nightingale of India, and she has contributed to every single Indian's life. It's a personal loss for every Indian. To introduce myself. 
I am Mohit Suryavanchi. I have a lab in Kolhapur, Maharashtra since 1996. It's almost 25 years. We completed this December. And a few glimpses of my lab. I would like to show you. We are a full service lab. We are fabricating all prostheses, all we are following the analog as well as the digital protocols. We have periodic trainings. We have sessions, in-house sessions, wherein we train our technicians. And as a technician, the difficulty that every technician has is we have to overcome certain case Sorry. There are certain limitations, sorry. We have to constantly Yeah, we have cases wherein we have a supra gingival margin, a sub gingival margin, we have implant cases and all these things stand on these fundamentals, the biology, the structure, the function and ultimately the aesthetics. And Brilliant has always been supporting in providing us all these solutions in the form of materials and techniques. We have been using materials from Brilliant in such a long time. All the polymers, the like materials like the BioHPP, the HIPC, and many more. Today, I welcome you to this expert roundtable, wherein we are going to talk about the newer generation of materials, which have been introduced and which are one of the finest materials we have been using in the laboratories. The topic today would be strength and stability, new generation prosthetic solutions. We have been using all these materials since a long time. We have been achieving great results. Patients are comfortable. Doctors are happy. We have digital protocol materials. We have analog protocol materials. But now as the material science is evolving, zirconia is taking a lot of share in the in the labs today we have been using zirconia for such a, such a long time we have been layering zirconia where zirconia was preferred for strength majorly and now when you can achieve strength with aesthetics nothing great like that so we are going to talk about something that is been introduced by brident here with the gradient technology Recent studies have shown that zirconia has sustained and it is a choice of material that can be predictably used and it can be used in many clinical indications. So the new generation zirconia over here is called as a Luxor Z. True nature. Earlier, we used to have the frame material, which was a bit opaque and we need to layer over it. Now, this material has a gradient in it. And gradient not only in terms of color, it is in terms of material also. There are two different materials which have been properly and high pressures pressed to form this beautiful blank. There is a 3YTZP and there is a 5YTZP and both of these have nicely combined together to give us strength as well as aesthetics. So that is the need of the new generation materials. So to start with some cases that we tried with this material, we are going to show you four cases, four different cases. One case we have fabricated over bio HPP using the Malo technique. One case is fully full strength, full monolithic zirconia over multi-unit abutments. One case is a full digital protocol without model and one case is a full mouth rehab wherein we have layered the anteriors and we have only monolithic posteriors. And you can see the results that can be achieved from one single blank. So to start with the first case, I'm not going more into the clinical aspects of any case. So everything was planned and now a trial was conducted. It was the trial was approved. And then we have the right kind of model sport 
we have the digital planning because the trials were done the aesthetic approval was done the incisal display the occlusion now this particular case has a natural dentition in the mandibular if you can see so we needed something that can sustain and that can be kind to the already deteriorating mandibular dentition hence we chose something that is softer as a frame material that is the bio hpp and we chose to have the zirconia crowns which are fully monolithic over it a design was crafted properly in all aspects where it is supportive it is following all the protocols of the connector thickness it is stable to ensure longevity so this is the milled bio hpp frame that we have and these are the necessary processing protocols the multi unit abutments are sandblasted well and the mkz primer has been applied to the titanium cylinders and the visioling primer has been applied to the fitting surfaces of the bio hpp frame so as you all know bio hpp is a revolutionary material we use it a lot in our office so we'll have it's endless discussion on bio hpp because one of my favorite materials today with the dtk glue we bond the multi unit abutments and the frame is ready for the processing the dtk glue is a revolutionary bonding materials it's a it's one of the best you can rely on the material we have been using this for such a long time we have documented cases over it the frame is ready for trial the trial is done and then we start designing the crowns as per the plan that we already had patient being a male we chose the right kind of library which is masculine and robust and when we talk about gradient technology you can easily see there is a nice transition between the dentine and the enamel this is just centered restoration and you can see the value it's not unnecessarily bright it can be controlled you have a nice incisal translucency in the area where we really need some natural looking incisal translucency so that's where this blank is my favorite it doesn't compromise on the color you get the right colors it's stable in terms of strength and you achieve the right kind of translucence and this is just staining and glazing over the existing zirconia there is no layering over this the only thing that we do after glazing is we make sure that we polish the zirconia the occlusal surface very well because we have a natural dentition as an antagonist <coughs> we have a fantastic zirconia finishing set from breedent which we use regularly and this gives you absolute mirror like finish trust me on this that's the final restoration we have layered it layered the bio hpp with the red and white creoline we have fantastic colors in creoline to replicate the exact pink tissue the intaglio surface of our restoration is cleansable so we don't have these kind of complications the polishability is not compromised at all it's a convex surface so the most important thing is the mission of our restoration should be we should have plaque free restorations easy cleansable for the patient too and this is the zirconia finishing set that i was talking about when it comes to custom abutments also it's not the uh, submergence profile which is given by the dentist where in the intaglio surface of these custom abutments rest they need to be polished well because polishing gives a great result and it avoids a lot of complications that can be caused the fibroblastic activity what is caused hence you can see how nicely it has blended the red and white is properly layered the transition of the zenith 
we have to apply certain primers over the zirconia that is the mkz primer a little bit of opaca and then we can extend these composites over the zirconias too the same can be achieved when you have a titanium frame instead of a bi hqp frame and that's where we started and this is what we could achieve the predictable restoration which has a frame in the form of bio hpp which is soft and cushioning and the restorations above the bio hpp are all monolithic zirconia restorations only stained glazed and polished Another case that we are going to talk about, wherein we receive a lot of intraoral scans these days, wherein the dentist uses the scan posts, the respective scan posts of the implant system that he uses here. It's a brilliant sky. And on that, we start designing straight away, wherein we are going to bond this zirconia over the TI base. So this is the future, I would say, when it comes to restorations because materials have evolved and we can achieve the right kind of strength and the right kind of aesthetics in one single material. Because there are a lot of zirconias in the market wherein the multi-layer is just a layer, multi-layer in form of colors. Herein we have two different materials that have been pressed together. And that's where this material is one of the best materials available today in the market. The milling that we conduct in the office is very precise. You can see all the engaging factors have been properly reproduced. So this restoration on the TI base fits like a glove. There is no rotation. And it's just, this is just the centered restoration that we have. And after adding character and color to it. Strong restoration, predictable restoration. And then we just bond it with the DTK glue. And that's it. Send it across. And that's how it has integrated in the patient's mouth. The color was properly reproduced. So was the value same time the strength was not compromised at all following all the protocols and when we talk about full arch zirconia restorations this is a case which we are just expecting the post-op images we have not yet received them this was a beautiful case which we did in a one block, one blank solution, the maxillary as well as the mandibular. Now over here, the nesting plays a very important role when we are talking about these multi-layer blanks. We need to achieve because there is also the, we need to check for the axis of the fitting of the bridge. So we need to choose the right size of blank wherein we can accommodate and we can achieve the exact transition area for the enamel and we can have the right fitting. So sometimes we feel that the bridge might sit in an 18 millimeters blank, but uh, you, may, you, may, you may have to choose a larger blank too. So Luxor next uh, to, uh, uh, Luxor blanks are available in uh, seven different uh, heights. So you can exactly place them and you can accommodate the enamel and the dentine areas the way you want, as well as you don't compromise on the fit when you're, especially when you're uh, having the, uh, having a five axis milling units. Okay. So all Vita shades are available. Also the bleach shade is available in Luxor Z2 to nature. So that's how the design was formed. That's the pre-sintered. And you can see once again, 
the kind of uh, translucence and the transition that we have achieved only the gingival area has been layered because certain studies have shown that the stability of this restoration is more when there is layering only on the gingival aspect so you have a lot of colors to reproduce if you have the right kind of information from the dentist you can have the exact tissue mimicking you can achieve the right colors the melamine uh, pigmentation everything these are certain rules that you need to follow to achieve a a proper and a stable design of this restoration you need to have the minimum thickness of this is what we follow in the office 1.5 millimeters at least the connector thickness should not be lesser than 14 millimeters you can see here this is a practical case you can exactly see the dimensions that i have followed and the restorations around the ti base should have 2 millimeters plus of thickness so nothing is compromised the case is through so when it comes to digital and analog workflow experience matters a lot if you just rely on digital digital is something that is going to just add speed to your workflow and precision to your workflow but if you don't have the right kind of experience over <coughs> analog work digital really won't matter so the next case before it comes we can have some questions in between yeah Mohit thank you so far wonderful uh, start into the sh your show let's say um, yeah we have on zoom uh, I, there's no questions have been coming in uh, okay. so I would like to encourage you to place your questions uh, if you really shouldn't have them, uh, we have the most perfect speaker on the world here. That's also nice to know, <laughs> let's say. Yeah, so please, no, seriously, feel free to place your questions uh, of what kind ever about case constructions, the way he did, it, did uh, the CAD CAM design, whatever. We have on uh, Facebook, as we're streaming live on Facebook too, there were a few questions coming in. Mohit, so... One is, um, what is your personal suggestion to use composite for gingiva on zirconia? There's a question coming from Italy. No, on, when it's zirconia, I would uh, rather go with uh, ceramics. Yeah, but uh, you showed you showed the Crea line on the on the looks of zirconia. No, no, the zirconia frame that you saw right now is not Crea line. The bio HPP frame that you saw. Ah, okay, in the okay, okay. Was, Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a Korea line. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. We you we have used uh, zirco uh, com composite on zirconia earlier, but today when the new generation, even we have liquid ceramics coming in today, wherein we have we can paint. So there is not much of a, a volume of ceramics that has to be, and there is no issues with the bonding. New materials have arrived, and uh, even with the right kind of uh, material manipulation, you can have a thin layer of uh, gingival materials over the zirconia because the pre-sintered zirconia can be colored with a pink to add a little bit of pinkish tinge to initiate the final layering with gingival materials. You have uh, colors that you can apply over the pre-sintered zirconia. But my favorite, my personal choice right now to layer on zirconia would be ceramics. Okay. But if you allow Mohit, I would like to add um, that of course, you have the option to use uh, composite. It is, is, this is not yeah. wrong to do it. Yeah, we Contrary, have you, have, you have even if you do the correct um, surface conditioning of the zirconia, which is sandblasting and using the MK set primer, you come to very high bonding values. And there is um, one, one advantage maybe compared to the ceramics, talking about gingiva, which is you can easier add after a while. If you're after six months or nine months, there should be a little um, relining done. This is, of course, a bit simpler than uh, using the ceramics. It's, it's, it's yes. less, less risky. Okay. Yes. Um, 
the another question that came in was can i purchase the, this new zirconia in the uk so question from uh, united kingdom and the answer is yes you just should contact um, um, uh, Brilliant UK for this, your local subsidiary in the UK. Uh, in UK, it's available as in all over Europe. This is the thing I forgot in the beginning. Um, the Luxor Zirconia is not available uh, all over the globe at the moment. We are with high speed working on this. For example, India, uh, the approval is there and it will come really soon. So just you're from India, for instance, just contact Breeding Group India in Pune and uh, um, the, it should be on the market pretty soon. Yeah. So, another question. Wait, let me see. Yeah, there's, uh, the, the applause, applause is coming in very early this time. Great presentation, very clear. Thank you so much. Super pictures. Um, bum, 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 bum. Let me see. Now at Zoom, we have some questions uh, too. Um, uh, what cement, what kind of cement did you use to cement the zirconia grounds on the framework for, I think, talking about the first case? I, I think, yes, I think, so I think, we use, a, as I showed you, we use the DTK glue. Mm -hmm. DTK glue, and for that, I showed you the conditioning of the titanium cylinders by sandblasting it primarily and then applying the MKZ primer on the titanium cylinders and sandblasting the bio HPP framework. If it is a bio HPP framework, sandblasting it and applying titan, uh, applying the visual link. If it's a zirconia restoration and if you want to bond it to the titanium cylinders, then both of these have to be sandblasted and MKZ primer needs to be applied. And with the DTK glue, you have a predictable bond. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. We have DTK glue, which, which was a, a attachment glue uh, in the beginning. You can use for such uh, indications as well as Mohit did. Um, quite a, one of our top selling products, very high bonding and very high stability. And one huge advantage with the DTKs, it comes uh, in a clear version and one uh, opaque version, especially for gluing high bases to uh, individual zirconia abutments when you have a thin zirconia abutment you avoid a gray shade from the zirconia which was sun blasted and you can cover the metal nicely with the with the um, opaque version of the DTK which is really excellent okay so one last question question and then we go ahead um, uh, can you explain the glazing protocol for monolithic zirconia Yes, it's coming. I'm, I, the next case is I'm going to show you the firing parameters also. Okay, okay. super. Yeah. Excellent. Then I think um, keep your questions or place them at the, in the F&A and yeah, we just go ahead. Thank you, okay. Mohit, so far. Thanks. Yeah. I disappear. <laughs> so the next case is a, it's a full mouth rehabilitation case when the patient was not happy with the overall function and aesthetics. So it was treated the verti prep way. We had digital scans coming in. This was a complete digital protocol wherein we received intraoral scans and we did this case segmentally. We usually prefer doing the entire case at one go, but this was a distant case and a dentist insisted on going segmentally and it turned out to be really nice. The diagnostic wax up was already through, I'm not going to take you through those steps. We had a, a, a we had approval of the diagnostic uh, wax up. It was transferred into the mouth. So we were very well aware of the dimensions that we need to replicate. It was just time to choose the right kind of library. And uh, we chose the right kind of library. We had all the functional spots. We took care of the anterior guidance, the canine guidance. Then the 3D models were printed. And the restorations were once again milled in the Luxor Z, true to nature blank, keeping in mind the incisal area translucency. Now being an anterior zone, being the zone of excellence and being a woman, 
this is what we achieved. This is just centered zirconia. You can see how beautiful it looks. We had the right kind of shapes. But being a woman and being a demanding case, we thought of doing some cutback over this and doing some micro layering. So that can add to this. Of course, every ceramist loves to cut back and layer his restorations because it does add. And we gave some subtle characterization in by layering it with some effects and enamels. The right kind of texture were achieved. Now, whenever we are glazing layered ceramic over zirconia, the firing temperatures will differ to what we use when we are glazing over monolithic structures. So just layered facially, the lingual aspects of these restorations have been monolithic. So the firing temperature for those lingual aspects were completely different. We got it fired first and then we initiate the layering on the labial aspect and that too with very minimal material so that there is no weak link. You, the minute you start adding material over unsupported frameworks, then it's a problem. The anteriors were delivered. They were cemented in the mouth and now it's time for going for the posterior restorations. We received the same form of intraoral scans. The planning was already done. So we have to just choose the right kind of library, achieve the right kind of occlusion, achieve the right kind of canine guidance. Once again, right intercuspation, functional spots. That's it. These are fully monolithic, no layering over it. Look at the vibrance, the value is controlled. And it's as much as artistry as you can do. So this is possible in one, only one form of blank. You can have a fully monolithic structure. You can make custom abutments. You can make a full arch restoration. You can make a single unit. And that's how the result was. That's where we started. Patient was very happy having restorations that are aesthetic at the same time, very, very stable. Now, this case was a beautiful case that we did. It was a multidisciplinary approach to this entire case. I won't go through the clinical details. All these cases are properly planned and only then we go ahead with these cases. So there is no gray zone. Everything is absolutely clear. It's just we have to do the reverse engineering. Everything has been sought earlier. The kind of uh, the, the incisal display, the occlusion, the sizes of the teeth. So these were the temps that were transferred to the patient and then for the final impressions. <clears throat> so this is very, very important. The prosthetic solutions that you will always uh, give to your dentist, they're all dictated by the available interarch distance. Now you'll see why we chose two different type of designs in one. The topical material remains to be zirconia, of course. We made the right kind of models, got them into the occlusion proper, the Facebook transfer and all, it was transferred rightly. And the trial was done on one, one, one abutment was engaged so that there is stability while doing the trial, all the movements were taken and certain changes, whatever required 
were conveyed by the dentist to us and we made them. The crying is done. And then we start designing this. So we had a screw access opening coming right in the area where the lateral is, if you can see clearly. In that area, we chose to go for the transversal screw assembly. We made a prototype. We also replicated the soft tissue in wax so that we could see while the patient smile at rest, how much incisal display and how much gingival display is needed. The height of the maxillary and also the bonding of the transversal screw assembly over our restoration was a challenge for us. So we chose to go for a Malo design in the maxillary and in the material choice of BioHPP. And in the mandibular, we went for a full arch zirconia monolithic frame. So this is the design that we finalized. keeping in mind the final dimensions of the restorations that will be coming over there. On the virtual articulator, we check all the movements so that there is no surprise later on. We have, because we are dealing with a material that is a harder material compared to the rest of the materials that we have been using earlier. So, the design needs to be very, very perfect. You don't have, you cannot lose on that. You need to spend time choosing the right kind of occlusion, getting the right kind of occlusal spots and the functional areas. And this design is ready for us. Now it's time for the nesting. So once again, because we need to also achieve the right aesthetics, the nesting, of the restoration into the respective blank holds a major importance. So this we chose for the 20 millimeters of uh, the Luxor Z blank, wherein we could achieve, as you can see, the area comes exactly into the enamel zone and also we get dentine. And look at the quality of milling that we conducted in the office, very, very precise. This is the milled bio HPP. This has been bonded over the titanium cylinders now. And this is a instrument that I use when, because we always finish the zirconia in the pre-sintered stage. I get, it's very easy to apply uh, rotary instruments over them. And I also use this scriber. It has a diamond tip with which I create manual texture, which can be, you can see on the right hand side, it's nicely replicated. And only after that, you can just do the staining and glazing. One more important thing is whenever you are trimming or grinding your zirconia restoration, make sure that you are doing it underwater, the aerotor handpiece, but no dry trimming. and also follow the long-term sintering cycles. We never ever choose for the fast sintering, be it a single crown or be it a full arch restoration. It has to go for a sintering that lasts about 11 hours overnight. Only then you can achieve the predictable restorations. So these studies have shown that the grinding of zirconia reduces its toughness and there is a molecular change in the zirconias. So we conduct a regeneration firing by default on all the zirconia, zirconia restorations that we fabricate in the lab. You can see the firing parameters on the left hand side. 
wherein the zirconia is introduced into the furnace and it is taken to the temperature of 1010 degrees and which is held at 10 minutes for 10 minutes and then it is this the l term means long term cooling so the furnace needs to open only when the furnace has cooled down to 450 degrees centigrade so regeneration firing makes zirconia perfectly stable i have been using this technique since the days when i used to do manual milling of zirconia now you can see the maxillary is a bio hpp frame on which we have these uh, zirconia crowns fit over them he just did some character because it is to be sent for the trial now to the dentist this is not the final one and the lower has been just colored now this is the try-in wherein we if, if you can see we just did a few restorations we colored them in order to get the patient's input if he needed some changes in them also to gain the right information about the gingiva color So when we talk about this kind of zirconia, you get the right kind of chroma, the right kind of color, and most important is the value. If you can see, there is, there are many restorations that we receive uh, feedback from the dentist that they have been looking very white, looking very opaque. Now these revolutionary zirconia materials, they will give you the right kind of color. At the same time, you can achieve the right kind of value, which is which actually replicates nature. So that reduces a lot of work for the dental technician. We had the texture, as you can see, these are all monolithic restorations. There is nothing that has been layered over them. And then this is the creoline red and white composite that I have layered over the bio HPP. We could achieve the right kind of harmony between the white tissue as well as the pink tissue. Now the transversal screw assembly really helped us to provide the right solution to this demanding case. So there is no label access hole in this particular case. The intaglio surface, as you can see, is highly polished and is convex. All the screw access holes, look at the character that we have given on these zirconia restorations. And this is the material that the question was asked earlier. This is the answer to that question. That is a zirconia restoration. And these are the titanium cylinders. If you can have the MKZ primer on applied because both of them are metal. The term MKZ means metal as well as zirconia. So this primer after the, uh, after the sandblasting needs to be applied on both the surfaces when it is a zirconia and metal. And then the DTK glue will glue it. Now, this is a bio HPP restoration. Now, this is the full arch zirconia in the mandibular of the same case. This is fully colored and gingival materials have been applied on the soft tissue areas. So this is the firing temperature for the person who was asking about the glazing temperature settings. Okay. So this is, we fire all these materials. These are low fusing ceramics, low fusing glaze materials available today. So the final temperature is 810 degrees. The holding time is one minute and once again the most important thing that you need to follow is the long-term cooling. I would rather 
decrease the long term cooling temperature to 350 as low as you can. It's better for the health of your zirconia. We don't need to give it a thermal shock. There are a lot of complaints. I get calls from uh, technicians that why zirconia frame cracked while it was in the furnace. The reason for that is primarily the regeneration firing needs to be conducted to make the zirconia more stable, whatever molecular structure that was changed that needs to be once again regenerated. And now when we are talking about the glaze, this is the right kind of firing parameter. On the left hand side, you can see the fully monolithic frame, the design took time, but that time was saved later on just while adding character and color to it. That's it. The long-term cooling, as I said, is the most important factor. So the recent studies, once again, have proven that zirconia would be a choice of material in the coming years. Once again, to uh, revive our earlier information, these protocols need to be followed. The connector thickness, the minimum thickness, and the material thickness around the titanium cylinders. So that's how our final restorations look on the model. The maxillary, we use the creoline composites and in the mandibular, we use these materials. And that's how the case went through right kind of intercuspation. The dentist is happy and the patient is very comfortable. So we always look forward in giving personality related aesthetics. We don't have a typical signature on our cases. Every case is different. So today to sum up the case aesthetics and longevity is dictated by the pre preparation protocols, of course, the implant positioning, the hard and the soft tissue management and the right kind of material selection and handling by the lab as well as the clinic. So for me, the new generation zirconia, the Luxor Z, true nature is a single disc solution. You can make individual crowns till full arch restorations, which you saw. It's physi physiological, aesthetic, and biocompatible. So that is the need of time. I would like to thank my mentors who have been giving me in-depth knowledge of a lot of cases and what of uh, we, we keep on sharing a lot of experiences and that's what adds to the whole case and it also gave me a vision to firstly observe understand and only then copy the nature you can get in contact with me on facebook or instagram and also on whatsapp and uh, I hope you like the show. Thank you once again, Breeden, and everybody for being patient. Thank you. Oh, hey, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, wonderful presentation. Deep thanks from my side. It's uh, um, overwhelming, the, the, the pictures you show regarding the quality in, in all respects. It's uh, one thing is that your the case is how you solve them. Your handcrafted restorations that come in a patient's mouth are, are world class. This is point one, but also the photo quality and um, the way you present it and and yeah, the how you teach the people the, your clear and predictable um, way to achieve those goals is fantastic. Thank you very much, Moi. Thank you. Yeah. Um, 
still we have some questions or we got some questions coming in during uh, uh, the last minutes. So yeah, I just will start with the qu questions. Let me see. Um, yeah, one question. I think this refers still to the gingiva on the on the Zirconia, uh, restorations. Is uh, is it not better to use com composite instead of firing ceramic for big Zirconia cases to avoid multiple firing? You, basically, you don't have to do multiple firings if you are very clear with the uh, layering pattern. Of course, composite is good, but as I say, it's very the it's very easy to layer composite. It's very beautiful, excellent. Sometimes the composite has to be polished. Real. Always the composite has to be a very polished surface. Okay. To have this kind of a hard zirconia restoration and to achieve the right kind of polish, you have to take it to the, to a machine. It's, 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 it's kind of a high risk over there. Yeah. Okay. okay. Got it. And while while doing a hand polishing, if you are able to achieve the perfect mirror polish, nothing like that, you please go ahead with composites. They are the best. But if you're not able to achieve the high mirror polish in on composites, then you're going to get your composites stained. Mm. So these and when there is a possibility, see, you cannot layer ceramic over by HPP. Sure, yeah. So their composite is Absolutely, it's the only solution that you can go. Yeah. Also, over zirconia, you can apply composite. But when you have the possibility today to layer gingival ceramics, gingival paint ceramics, then why not choose that? Once again, as zirconia has evolved in its own way, ceramics have also evolved in their own way. We have low fusing ceramics. And if you follow the right kind of firing protocols that I showed you, the firing uh, temperature, the parameters and the long-term cooling, nothing goes wrong. And you don't have to do multiple firings. As I said, you are not firing over an unsupported structure. Whatever you are layering is over a surface. There is nothing that is unsupportive. Yeah. So nothing is going to go wrong. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, another question also coming in from India is what is the bar pressure to sample as the Luxa crowns to bond with the tie bases as well as the micron size of the aluminium oxide. So we, we, we sandblast because it's a 360 degrees uh, coverage. So you don't have to worry too much on that. Okay, it's four bar pressure and 50 microns is good enough for the zirconia crowns. That's all because you're not going, you're just going to cement it and the cementation is going to be, a, it's a 360 degrees coverage over the frame. So you don't have to worry. Okay, yeah, and maybe I add. Um, don't don't get me wrong. Mohit, in the with the busy line uh, bonding protocol, um, we recommend to use one hundred ten bar. Yes. Always on all the materials, whether you send plus zirconia, metal, or polymer material like bio HPP. Um, but also, as far from I know from latest studies, uh, the. 50 micron also serves well on the zirconia. This is true. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what else do we have? Let me see. Here, some uh, a lot of applause coming in. A lot of positive feedback. Uh, very informative. Thank you. And let me just try to get my phone sorted here. Um, um yeah one 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 comment comes in uh, which says it seems to be a big advantage to have so many different sizes of the zirconia blanks to get the best poss possible nesting for best result yes yeah in fact this is um we have yeah between uh, uh, 16 and uh, or, or even smaller to to, to 25 millimeters and um, we have a big wide range of of sizes available with the luxor zirconia so um, you manage to nest almost all cases. I mean, yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, another question coming in is: Can I do some characterization color with visuline after the glaze fire of the zirconia in the furnace? So after the last firing, to stay in visual. What do you think, Moid? <laughs> yeah. 
you can you can do it and uh, you can enjoy the fumes coming out of the furnace yeah. no 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 it's it meant after the fire <laughs> after the after I, the fire thing it's going to burn out yeah after the glaze after the no it, if you can do some characterization with visualine so visual paint or some 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 from the creoline materials after the last firing if you can use visualine on zirconia for characterization oh, no 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 okay it does it won't stay. yeah you can you, you, maybe I add, or just to make this clear, this is a tricky question in the end. Um, you can use visualine, real line materials, etc., on zirconia. You get a perfect bonding. Just, just to, to make this clear. But um, on a full arch zirconia case, if you or you would not do it. This is very unusual. Um, if you want, whether you use them pure, like Mohit showed, which. Uh, the Loxatzikonia gives a perfect aesthetic outcome for posterior is always satisfying. And if you want to do some uh, individualization, you would use ceramics uh, to or a micro layering on top. This is what yeah. you showed in the, one of the cases. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me see again. Uh, one question coming from UK is what was the minimum wall thickness around the cylinders when you using bio HPP? The thickness of the bio HPP frames um, around. Uh, uh, we, we will always have a minimum thickness of four millimeters. Four millimeters? Yeah. Yeah, but this is, I think it's quite a lot, Moi, don't you so, think? It's, if, if you can see, we, we, we always have a thickness. If you saw all our frames, they were they they don't follow they have a proper stability in that areas like you know it the way how it tapers towards the incisal edge but minimum what we have been following today for uh, the zirconia as well as bio hpp it is somewhere around four four millimeters okay yeah by the way, the, the officially for BioHP frames, the minimum thickness uh, is 0 0.5, 0 0.6. But of course, when you're doing a full arch frame and you have too many, let's say, weak areas, you might get in trouble. The BioHP is a very strong material. It's a, um, almost unbreakable, let's say, but you, you uh, um, should keep, of course, the rules. Yeah, to, especially when we are doing a BioHP frame over the transfer cell screw. You can imagine if it is yeah. too thin in that area, then the frame can simply get broken in that area because it's not a 360 degrees uh, coverage. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So all these things also matter. So we have uh, like, you know, set a protocol over here and we are, we are happy with that. Nothing has gone wrong yet. Yeah. yeah. I think Better. if you, if you keep in mind the pictures Mohit showed you, um, this is a good uh, framework design for the bio HPP frames where that will never give you trouble in the end and yes. and it's not not a block it's not over designed I mean it still gives a higher convenience to the patients and uh, regarding phonetics etc everything was perfectly because India, executed because in India we used to get the uh, inputs from uh, certain people that bio HPP is they, they did not rely on bio HPP probably because Technicians did not follow the right processing protocols and the right uh, uh, material thickness protocols. And that's the reason the materials probably gave up before time and tried to bring a bad name to the material. So if we follow all this, the material stays absolutely stable. Nothing goes wrong. Yeah, exactly. Okay, just a moment. There's more and more questions coming in. How do people really uh, place the questions? Um, what, what, one question coming from Germany is, uh, what is the main advantage to have BioHPP underneath a zirconia bridge? Or un, un, under the zirconia, um, to, 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 to use the full zirconia on BioHPP, where do you see the advantage? Oh, basically, BioHPP is a fantastic material. It adds to a cushioning effect. And uh, this particular case, what you saw, we had to use a transversal screw. So we thought uh, that would, uh, and also the height of this uh, particular case in the maxillary was more. And we thought bio HPP would make the whole restoration lighter in, in weight and at the same time stable. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. This is it, it, the, the use of the bio-HPP reduces uh, dramatically the weight of the restoration. And one thing which is, meanwhile, which is clearly common sense in implantology is the fact that our bone, human bone, is not uh, brittle and hard. We, if you imagine that the mandible, lower arch, um, every time we all of us, we, we, we laugh, chew, bite into an apple. When we open the mouth, uh, we have a, 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 um, a contraction and a deformation in the mandible up to 1.5 millimeters, which is uh, a lot. And the implants were tightly inserted or with, with the bone. And so there's no movement of the implant like the movement the natural tooth shows. So it clearly makes sense to have a material that is a little bit more elastic. I mean, this is not like rubber. We have a very strong material, but it flexes a bit with the bone. And so it reduces the stress to the implants. We have clearly, we have a range of scientific studies on this that we find 50% less stress on the implants. Yeah, so so when, we, uh, yeah when we design this, it's like, you know, giving back the bone and on that our zirconia what uh, the two nature is it's having two different type of zirconias pressed over each other the incisal area zirconia has a softer it's it's a softer material the compressive strength is about 800 megapascals and in the cervical areas it's 1100 megapascals so what a property of a tooth is like you know it's softer and uh, overall the whole restoration is just perfect yeah okay good uh let me see i just have to get sorted the questions Uh, one question is, how is the bonding between BioHPP and creoline compared to zirconia and creoline? BioHPP and creoline is fantastic bond because both of them are hybrid materials. Okay. Yeah. And then it is zirconia and composite. The bond is good. Absolutely good. But not the best the way how to polymers will bond with each other two resins will bond each other okay yeah because you are trying to bond two diverse materials one is a zirconia and one is a composite of course if you use the right kind of surface treatment the silaning the uh, sandblasting and on that after you apply the right kind of primers and create a proper window which is there is no area of that is unsupported then even your composites will stay the only thing about the composites would be the polishing factor. If you follow that, it's all in control, not to worry at all. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Mahid. Um, um, maybe I can add to this question, the, the bonding values, if I, my memory serves well. I think the uh, creoline on the BioHPP comes up to 40 megapascal, 40 which is the gold standard, as we say, this is similar to the, to the um, ceramic fused to metal, higher bonding value you do not find in, in the dental technique. And uh, the prayer line on zirconia shows a similar values if you use the protocol correctly. So both bond in the end perfectly. The bondings yeah. we show are very, very high compared to competitors um, regarding the bonding system and primers we uh, offer. We are really playing Champions League here. Okay, one more question we got coming in uh, also from India, I think, which is um, the bio HPP needs a lot of thickness around the titanium cylinders for full arch restoration. For zirconia, can it be kept lesser? the design of the frame yes if you if you saw my earlier slide the thickness uh, that we need is two millimeters minimum two millimeters is required okay minimum two millimeters and above that everything is acceptable but you should not uh, like you know it should it should not be lesser than two millimeters please yeah okay good so let me see well i think uh, we have 
answered all the questions uh, as far as I can judge. Just a second, I'll take a look at my phone too, because I'm always working on several channels here. I should get double payment. Um, okay, now we are through with the questions. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you again very much for participation. Um, we have a lots of likes and thumbs up on Facebook as well, Mohit. Huge positive feedback. Thanks a lot for you to give us your valuable time today. Um, uh, I would like to inform the audience that we go on, of course, with this expert roundtable webinar uh, approximately every four weeks. The next session we will have on the 7th March is uh, Ms. Marina Litvinova from uh, Russia. This webinar will be held in Russian language, but nevertheless, I can recommend you to follow this um, session as we you will see a lot of really excellent um, uh, cases done with the Britain system. So everybody is invited to the next show within four weeks. Um, I would like to thank you again. Um, in case for further questions, don't hesitate to write us even after this uh, um, session today uh, or get in touch with your local Brident responsibles. We are available 24-7 for you. Thanks a lot. Um, keep healthy, stay safe. Um, I wish you all a good, positive and successful year 22. See you again. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Moid. Take care. Bye-bye.